Here is an overview of linking in Quickly. Linking is a core element of the internet and the web, since it allows you to create an interconnected network of webs, which usually leads to falling down multiple internet rabbit holes. Links allow us to link documents to other documents or resources, link to specific parts of documents, or make apps available at a web address. You can link just about any Quickly block, apart from, for obvious reasons, the section, image, video, column block, not to be confused with columns, which can be linked, gallery, slider, not to be confused with slides, which can be linked, modal, menu, input, hook, fragment, query, repeater, and taxonomy term blocks. The Quickly link, once activated, doesn't wrap your block in a link wrapper, but instead, transforms it in a link, allowing it to conserve the characteristics of the initial block. Thus, it allows you to specify the desired tag, a button, etc. In Quickly, in the Gutenberg editor, you can simply link a block from the primary panel by selecting the link property. Once selected, it opens up a panel with a variety of ways of linking dynamic slash static data, as well as different actions. More specifically, you can choose to link with the URL or action type. The URL type means that once the link block is selected, the user will be redirected to the desired URL. It can have a static source, which relies on manual changes. Conversely, it can be dynamically set with WordPress or ACF Pro, which means that it can change depending on the different parameters available or set at the time, making it update automatically. ACF, which stands for Advanced Custom Fields, is a tool you can use to quickly set up dynamic elements. On the other hand, the action type, as its name indicates, allows you to perform a specific action to the linked block. So instead of being redirected to a URL, the user selection will perform a certain action on another block. For example, if you wish your user to be able to share a post from your website on a social media platform, they can with the action share type. Before we move on to exploring the different types and sources, always remember to set your link to active by switching the active toggle. This is handy to activate and deactivate your link in a fast and easy way. You'll know if you have done so correctly if the link icon lights up in blue. We will start with the URL type and then later on move on to the action type. If we leave the source to static, which it is set to by default, you can see that you can simply type in slash paste in your desired URL link. It's that simple. Let's now save this page and see the front end. As you can see, when I select the block on which we have the URL linked to, we get redirected as expected. Heading back to the back end, below the text face, we can see two toggles. These toggles can be used for static slash dynamic URL link and action types. First, the new tab toggle can be used so that the URL link will open in a user's new tab instead of in the one they're currently on. On the right, we have the link rel, which stands for link relationship. To better understand this attribute, we need to understand that a link element, by essence, creates a link between the current HTML document the user is on and an external resource which they then are redirected to. Thus, the rel attribute specifies the relationship between the two documents. It basically helps search engines determine how to index or display the page according to the information given by the link relationship attribute. There are several values that can be specified, such as author, if the link URL provides a link to the document's author, or the help value that provides a link to a help document. In an effort to keep this video short and sweet, we won't go over every attribute value, since there is a large number of them. However, we have provided you with a link in the description with the necessary information on this attribute and its long list of values that are clearly explained with illustrated examples, so be sure to check that out if needed. Moving on, we can now leave the type to URL and explore the dynamic source. As a reminder, a dynamic source allows you to specify a source that
that might change depending on the different parameters available or set at the time. Thus, it will update automatically and relies on WordPress dynamic data as well as ACF Pro. For example, if I set the data to featured image, then add a featured image to my post in the post settings and then in the featured image panel. So if we take a look at the front end and select our linked block, as expected, our featured image pops up. Of course, there are many other data options that you can choose to dynamically link from. We can now explore setting a data from an ACF group field. So we can select ACF field as data. However, the ACF group field is empty since we haven't created one. First, we can update this page and exit it. In the WordPress dashboard, we can quickly set up an ACF field group by heading to the Custom Fields tab. We can select the Add New button at the top to add a new field group. Once you have added an appropriate field group name, you can select the Add Field button. You can set a field label and set the field type to either text or URL. It boils down to the same thing. We won't be specifying any more, but as you can see, you can be specific as you like. Don't forget to publish your field group. Let's now head back to our previous page. As you can see, now when we open the ACF group and field dropdowns, our freshly created group appears. However, for the moment our block won't link to anything since we haven't added a link to our ACF field. We can quickly do so by selecting the arrow on the right hand corner and typing in slash pasting in our desired URL link. Then all you need to do is update your page. Let's see how this works on the front end. As expected, once our block selected, it redirects to the desired URL link. We can move on to greener pastures by changing the link type from URL to action. In order to choose the action you want your block to perform, simply open the source dropdown and select it. However, there are different source actions to pick and choose from, which all have a specific use case. Firstly, the Lightbox source will open an image slash video in a Lightbox window once the block is triggered. As a reminder, a Lightbox is a window overlay that appears over a web page, blocking some of the content and dimming and disabling the rest of the user's viewport background. It is usually used to showcase pictures, galleries or videos in a focused way. Naturally, the data displayed in the Lightbox can be dynamic or static. We will start with static data. I will select the video type, but you can choose the image type if you like. I will then type in my video's URL. But of course, you can choose a video slash image from your media library by selecting the search button. You can leave it here, but I like to set an overlay color for a more personal and focused look. We can now check this out on the front end. Once our block selected, our video pops up with a nice overlay color. Back in the linking panel, we can see the gallery name text space at the bottom of the Lightbox option. This feature allows you to create a Lightbox gallery for Lightbox items. An example use of this feature is if on your website's homepage you have a few buttons the link to Lightbox images. Well, if the user wants to browse through every linked Lightbox item, they can. You can easily set the gallery up by copying one of the block's gallery name and pasting it in the others. So I will copy this gallery name and paste it in another block. we can more effectively see this feature come to life on the front end. As you can see, now when I select my first block's Lightbox item, there is an arrow that lets me slide through the different Lightbox items that are part of the gallery. The great thing is, you can choose exactly which items to be or not part of the gallery, leaving you with control. We now select a dynamic source for our Lightbox and select Featured Image.
We can now see this on the front end. As expected, our post's featured image appears in our lightbox. And as you can see, our lightbox gallery remains and is usable. We can now move on to the Share Source. This linking feature allows you to share the current page you're on to different social media platforms. Simply select the platform you'd like to use to share your link with, and the trick is done. This can be really handy to share your website or post with your following. I will select Twitter. As you can see, we can add a description, which can help quicken the process. Let's now see this on the front end. As you can see, we get redirected to Twitter with our link and description already set up. All we'd need to do is select Tweet. We can now move on to the modal source. This allows you to link any block so that it can open, slash close, or toggle a modal. As a reminder, a modal is a web page element that displays in front of and deactivates all other page content. It acts like a lightbox, since a lightbox is essentially a modal and is used for the same purpose directing the user's attention to some specific and important action, such as a coupon, membership deal, or newsletter. In order to set this up so that it opens slash closes slash toggles a modal, you'll need to have a modal and its block ID. I already have one on my page, but if you don't, don't hesitate to import one from the quickly designed library, specifically in a navigation panel where the link is already set up for you. I will copy its block ID. Back in my link settings panel, I will select the open type, which will open the targeted modal, and finally paste in my modal's ID in the text area. Let's check this out on the front end. As you can see, once selected, our modal opens. However, since this modal takes up my whole viewport, I cannot exit it. This brings us to the close type, which I will be setting on my exit cross icon. Back in the editor, I can select my icon block and simply activate it, set the type to action with modal as source, and set the close type, which, as you can guess, will close our modal. And remember to paste in the modal's ID. We can update the page and see the result. And now, I no longer feel trapped by the modal since it closes as expected. Lastly, on our original linked block, we can open up the link panel and select the last type, toggle, which can open and close our modal, which is handy dandy. However, if I look at the front end now, it's not surprising that if I select the block once, the modal will open as expected. However, it gets placed behind the modal, which makes it impossible to reselect in order to close the modal. So we will need to set a higher Z index for our block. When we talk about Z-index, we're talking about the CSS property, which defines the hierarchy of elements and their overlapping. Thus, if a block has a high Z-index, it will be placed on top of elements with a lower one. We can select our div containing our icon and head to the Advanced tab in the Layout panel and set a 1005 Z-index. We're setting a relatively high Z-index, since by default, modals have a high one to ensure that no content can possibly bleed through it. We can now update and check this out. Now when we toggle the modal open, our button remains visible so that we can close it the same way we opened it. Moving on to the contact action link type, which allows users to quickly contact someone for email or message where some of the fields can be filled in. For example, if it's a button that users can use to contact your website support, you can fill in the email, subject, and message to make things smoother. So if I select the email type, I will do just that. We can see how this works on the front end. As you can see, once selected, it opens up my emails and all the info I filled in is there. It's ready to send off. Next, we can select the slider link source which allows you to create your own slider navigation buttons for a previous, slash next, or specific slide, instead of the generic default ones that come with the slider block. This allows you full power over what type of block you can use and how it works with the slider. As with the modal, in order to illustrate this, 
we will be needing a slider, which I already have on my page, as well as its block ID, which I will copy now. As you can see, I already have two arrow icons. The left one will switch to the previous slide, and the right one will switch to the next. Let's open the left icon's link setting panel, activate it, set the type to action, select slider as the source, and previous as slider action, and lastly, paste in our slider's block ID. We can repeat the same process for our right arrow, but select next for the slider action. You know the drill, we can update the page and see the front end. When we use either the right or left arrows, they bring us to the corresponding slides. Lastly, we can explore the Go to Index action, which allows you to target the exact slide you want the user to be brought to. The way in which it technically works is you enter the slide index number you want to target. To better illustrate this, if you have a slider with three slides and want to target the second slide, simply set 2 as the go to index. And if you wish to target the third, simply set 3, and so on. Below this slider, I have already made divs nesting a paragraph and icon that are set in a numerical order. So all we need to do is open the link settings on the first div, activate it, set the type to action, the source to slider, and slider action to go to index, and then type in the number 1. We can repeat the same process for the other three divs with their corresponding numbers. Let's see this on the front end. As you can see, when I select the second slide, the slider brings into view the second slide. Finally, last but not least, we have the scroll to top source, which allows you to add the action that makes users come back to the top of a page to any block. Of course, you can choose where you want the button to appear and disappear on the page. We won't be going into detail of this feature, since we have a whole dedicated video on this exact subject, which we'll be sure to add a link to in the description. And that's how linking in quickly works.